Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, the search continues for those responsible for a drive-by shooting on the city's west side. And several major social media companies are now getting subpoenas for record related to the Capitol riot last year. And as we head into our Friday and our weekend, a heads up from everybody from our team of meteorologists, the National Weather Service, high fire danger for at least part of the weekend. Good morning, everybody. We made it to Friday the 14th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, starting off cold again at 42 degrees. Uh, it was very nice yesterday afternoon. Time to batten down the hatches, though, and get the uh, porch, the back porch, front porch, yes. just about everywhere. Lawn furniture all battened down and uh, secured for tomorrow. Yeah, and so today, just kind of the sort of things that today's going to be like yesterday, where we're going to gain, yesterday we gained 40 degrees between the low and the high, mid-30s up to mid-upper 70s, uh, just about the same thing today. Then, yes, tomorrow uh, it is going to be very, very windy, some of the windiest uh, conditions we've seen around here in a long, long time. All right, we're starting off this morning, beautiful day. It is definitely, as Steph said, chilly out there, freezing right now, Kerrville, uh, very close to it, Bandera, Bernie Stage Comfort, 41 out there at the airport, and we've got a little bit of a breeze right now. Um, most areas don't have much wind, seven miles per hour out there at the airport, so the wind chill is at 36. We may drop another couple of degrees here or there, and then once again, make it up into the upper 70s. We're going to be close to the record today is 79, going for 77 for high temperature. Mountain cedar is moderate. Mold did drop down. So this morning, once again, like yesterday, you need a jacket. Temperature going for 39 here in town. Clear skies and uh, basically light wind and and then later on today, 77 for a high temperature. The cold front is going to come through just after midnight and it is going to be windy pretty much when that moves through all the way through uh, tomorrow late afternoon. So as you can see, there's two different shades of uh, kind of tan on here. The darker shade, the entire area has a wind advisory from midnight up until 6 p.m. tomorrow. Then that lighter shade, which includes portions of the hill country in the Rio Grande Valley, that is a fire weather watch that has been posted for right now for the same time period up through 6 o'clock tomorrow evening. And then way out to the west, there's red flag warnings that are posted. Some of those red flag warnings may start to be posted in our western counties. We'll keep tabs on that. But yeah, very, very windy and much colder tomorrow. And then it looks like we got another freeze in store later on in the weekend. More on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. This morning, suspects in a drive-by shooting on the west side are still on the run. The home they targeted on Wednesday morning had four people in it at the time, and one woman was hit in the leg, but we are told she's okay. Those who live in the 300 block of Dolores Avenue near Culebra say they fear another shooting could be around the corner and that they might get caught in a crossfire. At least one bullet missed the home and hit a neighbor's fence. They go to target one home and innocent people get hurt, you know, and it's scary because, you know, like I say, we've never experienced something like that. You never know. And also you can be walking and you can get shot, too. I mean, so it's kind of scary, too. You know? And both men that our crews talked with did not want to be identified. Police say there's still an investigation, but they do not believe the public is in danger and called the shooting an isolated incident. Now to the most serious charges so far in connection with last year's riots at the U.S. Capitol. Meanwhile, the Congressional Committee investigating the riot is now targeting social media. ABC's Faith Abube has all the details. This morning, federal authorities investigating the attack on the U.S. Capitol are handing down the most serious charges yet. The Justice Department charging 11 people with seditious conspiracy, a rare charge used against people who conspire to overthrow put down or destroyed by force the government. All the defendants or members or associates of the Oath Keepers, a right-wing militia. Near Dallas yesterday, the FBI removing evidence from the home of the group's leader, Stuart Rhodes. According to the indictment, Rhodes sent these encrypted messages to his followers after the 2020 election. Quote, we aren't getting through this without a civil war. And quote, we must do now what the people of Serbia did when Milosevic stole their election, refused to accept it and march en masse on the nation's capital. Investigators say Rhodes spent $17,000 on weapons and tactical gear in the weeks before the attack. Then 
on January 6th, several Oath Keepers were seen here marching up the steps of the Capitol. Investigators say other members were armed and stationed nearby, all in an effort to stop the certification of President Biden's election victory. I, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., do solemnly swear. But the alleged conspiracy did not end on January 6th. Later that month, on Inauguration Day, an associate of Rhodes allegedly messaged the group saying, quote, after this, if nothing happens, it's war, civil war 2.0. Rhodes is due in court today. He has repeatedly denied any wrongdoing, claiming he never told his members to enter the Capitol. If convicted, he and other Oath Keepers could face 20 years in prison. And as for the House Select Committee investigating the attack, it's now focusing on social media companies sending subpoenas to Facebook, Google, Twitter, and Reddit. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. The man who assassinated Senator Robert F. Kennedy has been denied parole. California's Governor Gavin Newsom says he's reversed the decision by the Board of Parole hearings to grant parole to Sirhan Sirhan. The governor says Sirhan has failed to address what led him to assassinate the senator in 1968. Sirhan spent 53 years in prison for the killing. The now 77-year-old ambushed Kennedy in the kitchen of the Ambassador Hotel in Los Angeles following a presidential campaign event. He was originally sentenced to death, but that was commuted to life in 1972 after the California State Supreme Court declared the death penalty unconstitutional. At least four rockets targeted the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad's heavily fortified green zone yesterday. The area is home to diplomatic missions and the seat of Iraq's government. Three of the missiles struck within the perimeter of the American embassy. Another hit a school located in a nearby residential complex. An Iraqi military statement said a girl and a woman were injured in the attack. The attack is the latest in a series of rocket and drone attacks that have targeted the American presence in Iraq since the start of the year. Tennis star Novak Djokovic faces deportation again after the Australian government revoked his visa for a second time. The Australian immigration minister says he used ministerial discretion to revoke the 34-year-old Serbian's visa on public interest grounds three days before the Australian Open is set to begin. The minister reiterated the Australian government's firm commitment to protecting borders, particularly in related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Djokovic's lawyers are expected to appeal the cancellation in the federal circuit and family court as they successfully did after the first cancellation. Time now, 437 and about 42 degrees out there. Up next, Cowboys preparing to take on the Niners in a big matchup this weekend. It's Wild Card Weekend. We have a preview. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Guide. I know on the way in, I saw quite a few cars, but I usually do on Friday morning. And look there at I-10 at Hackberry. Things are moving. And outside with live cam, Mike's full forecast coming up right here on GMSA. Pour yourself a fresh cup of hot, hot coffee. We'll be right back. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys will be facing the seventh ranked defense against the run when they host the San Francisco 49ers Sunday at AT&T Stadium in the first round of this year's playoffs. Ezekiel Elliott coming off his best performance since week five of the season when he rushed for 87 yards on 18 carries against Philly to finish with 1,002 yards in the regular season. Meanwhile, Cowboys star quarterback Dak Prescott says he's just happy to be in the postseason again. I think just uh, allows you to not take any moment for granted. And um, yeah, it seems it seems like a long time, uh, obviously, just putting everything that's happened in between there um, on the field, off the field, not making the playoffs, personal things being taken away from the game uh, to, yeah, being able to be back here with such a great team um, and just knowing the opportunity that we have in front of us, uh, just not, not only the talent, but the, the brotherhood, the uh, relationships. Um, and just the, the special bond that we've got. Uh, I think that can, that's going to be the, the factor that, that, that we take into this game and that can carry us uh, far. The dysfunctional Houston Texans have fired David Culley as their head coach just four days after the regular season came to an end. Texans finished with a 4-13 and record. Quarterback Deshaun Watson never played a down after 22 civil suits were filed against him during the offseason last year. He's accused of sexual assault and misconduct during massages. Coley wasn't the only staffer let go, so was Texans offensive coordinator Tim Kelly. 
Spurs guard DeJounte Murray's having a breakout season. Too bad no one outside of San Antonio has taken notice, at least not with the fans. In the second round, a fan voting for this year's All-Star Game released. Murray's not even the top 10 among Western Conference guards. That's despite the fact that Murray scored his seventh triple-double of the season in the recent 128-124 loss to the Rockets. He became only the third player in Spurs franchise history to score a triple-double with 30 or more points, and he did it with zero turnovers. He's an all-star. He's playing amazing. He's doing amazing things for us. Uh, and anything you can ask, he, he's doing it for us. Uh, I mean, big-time basketball. I think uh, DeJounte Murray is definitely an all-star. I think he just understands the game in a different way probably now. It's probably a lot, a lot slower to him, you know. Um, I mean, he's almost getting a triple-double every game. That's, I think he's got the most in the league, if I'm not mistaken up there so you know he's I think the game just slowed down for him and he under, understands it in a different way than he probably has ever has next up Spurs welcome the Cavaliers to town tip off tonight 730 over at the AT&T Center go Spurs go that's right go Spurs go time now 443 and about 42 degrees out there still ahead how to make sure you don't get scammed while trying to find a legitimate at home COVID test and how law enforcement was responding to multiple reports of uh, Apple air tags being used to follow people without their knowledge And welcome back. It's 446. Law enforcement officials across the country are receiving reports of Apple AirTags being used to follow people without their knowledge. ABC's Becky Worley has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an urgent warning to law enforcement about Apple's AirTags. Law enforcement officials in New Jersey issuing a warning to officers saying air tags and similar devices pose an inherent threat to law enforcement as criminals could use them to identify officers' sensitive locations, patterns of life, etc. The issue not limited to police. I was seeing videos all over TikTok and everywhere else of people getting notifications on their phone that an air tag has been following them and that people are like placing them on their cars and stuff. Adriana Ballesteros was out shopping with a friend when one of their phones showed this air tag notification. It reads, this item has been moving with you for a while. The owner can see its location. There was a map that showed it followed our exact location from Target all the way back to her house. So how can you make sure no one's tracking you? We'll have the expert tips coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. Well, of course, there's a huge demand for COVID-19 home test kits, and scammers know that. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Morris explains what you can do to avoid buying a fake. As Omicron surges, so does demand for testing. Deanna Cardoza came to this near downtown testing site. She couldn't find a home test. They are impossible to find an HEV. It has been going to Walgreens. They are gone. Seems it's a scavenger hunt to find the rapid home tests. With busy testing sites and a scarcity of home tests in stores, it's convenient to just shop online for a home test. But federal authorities are warning. Be careful. The Federal Trade Commission cautions that according to the FDA, fake and unauthorized at-home testing kits are popping up online. And the Better Business Bureau is getting reports of sneaky robocallers. They try to get uh, achieve some kind of buy-in, saying there's been an indication in your area or your neighborhood that uh, you might you know, have a positive, uh, a series of positive tests. So we recommend you go to this website. A bogus website where they take your sensitive information and your money, but you get no test. Mike Moreno needs frequent testing for work, so he's looked online. It's just hard. You gotta know if it's, it's FDA approved and CDC approved. That's the only thing. And then you don't really know for sure. So how do you know? How can you avoid a fake? The FDA lists on its website all of the home test kits it's authorized for emergency use. Next, the FTC says check out the seller, check reviews, and put the company's name plus the word scam in the search bar. Finally, pay by credit card. If there's a problem, you can dispute the charge. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Some folks have to be out the door by about 5 o'clock, and we're about 12 minutes away from that. Traffic is looking good there at 410 and Babcock and all around the city right now on your early, early Friday morning. Definitely time to take off now if you want to get there on time, I guess. Uh, 449 and still kind of cold out there for, for now. Mm -hmm. And then a huge, huge warm up throughout the day. We're going to gain a close to a record later on today. Record 79 going for 77. And did you uh, driving in this morning see this off in the uh, 
western sky. I, I believe really I did. Yeah. It is the beautiful waxing gibbous moon. It's going to be full on Monday and just a beautiful picture out there. We've got lots of clear skies. And what's interesting is despite these cool temperatures and low humidity, we've got some fog in place, believe it or not. First of all, freezing pair of 32s. Comfort uh, Kerrville, 41 here in town. A little bit of a breeze, not much. That's why it's much colder out there in the hill country. But we've got that little bit of a breeze and that puts the wind chill down to 36 here in town. Beeville and Corpus Christi have a lot of fog. It's going to be confined down there to the southeast. Just be aware if you're heading down 37 later on the, this morning. Well, otherwise, upstairs in the atmosphere, very, very dry air. So we're going to have, once again, really, really just beautiful, bright sunshine today and those gorgeous blue skies. All right, here's what's going to be going on. Humidity remains very, very low, and uh, it'll try and come up a little bit throughout the afternoon, but not much. And that, again, is on the downside as far as with this front moving through here. There's no moisture for it to work with, so it's not going to squeeze out anything. It's just going to be a big wind producer. So we go through the evening hours and uh, late tonight, Front's obviously going to move through the hill country first of all. Here in town, going for about midnight. And then when that thing comes on through here, boy, you're going to notice it. The window's going to be rattling in the overnight hours and throughout the day. Just like Mark had said earlier, batten down everything for tomorrow because we're going to be seeing potential wind gusts uh, 40, close to 50 miles per hour, maybe even higher than that in some areas. And that really, really dry air that comes on in here, that is what is going to potentially create some red flag warnings out to the west. There's nothing posted as of right now, but there is going to be that threat for tomorrow. Uh, winds will settle a little bit by Sunday morning, and so that's going to allow temperatures to really drop down and we'll get close to freezing Sunday. Watch as the front moves through here. Nothing happens. Again, there's no moisture for this thing to work with, so it'll just come through on the uh, the dry side. And uh, as far as satellite picture, nothing going on as of right now, and we won't really see much in the way of any clouds around here at all for the next couple of days. 70 at noon today, sunny skies, very warm, already well above normal, and then 77 for high temperature. Now, the again, that's two degrees away from the, uh, the record. Front comes through about midnight, and that's when the wind advisory goes into effect. Then this area off to the west is a Fire weather watch again. Winds are going to be gusting 40 to 50 miles per hour around the area tomorrow, and temperatures will be about 20 degrees cooler, 57 for a high. So we will be on the below normal side. Freezing Sunday morning, close to it on Monday morning. We put 32 degrees on there as well. We start the warm up first half of the week. Another front by the uh, by probably early on Thursday of next week. Hopefully it squeezes out a couple of showers. But again tomorrow. Just extremely windy. Yeah, tie down everything. I mean, it's going to be some of the windiest conditions we've seen in a long time around here. Okay, we'll try to remember, remember to do that Friday night or well, tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This afternoon, tomorrow tonight. Morning. Yeah. yeah, before the sun goes down Cause, tonight. Because all night long, yeah. meaning the overnight hours and tomorrow through the day. Getting up tomorrow morning is not going to work. It will lower to be uh, here. Right. All right, yeah. thank you, Mike. 452, about 42 degrees. And coming up next, the latest film in the screen franchise arrives in theaters. Plus, this is Washington stars in the tragedy of Macbeth. We have a look at the latest Denzel Washington film, plus the Scream franchise is back with a fifth film. For the look at what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. We thought I heard a voice cry, sleep no more. A struggle for power, greed, and ambition. Is this modern day politics or Shakespeare's Macbeth or both? The film The Tragedy of Macbeth stars Denzel Washington in the lead role, and he says it doesn't matter that it was written over 400 years ago. Unfortunately, things haven't changed much. You know, it, it, it's the still that 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 wrestle for power, the struggle for power, and 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 uh, the abuse of power, and those themes are all the same now and 400 years ago. The tragedy of Macbeth just scored Washington a Screen Actors Guild Award nomination for lead actor. It's out today on Apple TV Plus. So, who are you? The question isn't who am I. The question is where am I? 26 years after the original Scream movie freaked out audiences and made them laugh. Yeah. Much of the original cast is back for the oh, fifth film in the franchise. It's the first one without creator Wes Craven, who died in 2015. And star Nev Campbell says she was apprehensive about coming back. It wasn't immediately a yes, only because I was apprehensive about making one of these without Wes. You know, he was he was the master of these movies and the reason they are as brilliant as they are and, and as much fun as they are. But the early reviews say they got it right. 
The new Scream is only in theaters starting this weekend. Also new today, the critically acclaimed Ricky Gervais dramedy Afterlife returns for its third and final season on Netflix. Transformania. And Transformania is the fourth animated Hotel Transylvania film that's on Amazon Prime Video. And maybe they should start a birthday band. Superstar rapper LL Cool J is 54 today. Sharing a birthday with Foo Fighters founder Dave Grohl, who's 53. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. About 3 till 42 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we'll have reaction now that the Supreme Court has blocked the Biden administration's efforts to mandate COVID-19 vaccines at large employers nationwide. Plus, the YouTube sensation Baby Shark hits a major milestone. We'll tell you how many times it's been viewed coming up in your morning Tech Bites. A quick look at the roads with TransGuide. Uh, there's something going on there at Loop 1604 and Braun Road. We'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos very shortly. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A family displaced after a fire on the city's north side. What fire crews are telling us how to keep safe and keep warm. What we know coming up next. A loss and a partial victory at the U.S. Supreme Court for President Biden's vaccine mandate plans. I'm ABC's Faith Abubit with the latest coming up. It's about to get very windy and cold around here in South Central Texas, but not yet. Right now we're in the 40s out there. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday the 14th. Thanks for joining us. Happy Friday. But before all those changes, we're going to have a pretty nice afternoon. Let's see how warm things could get today before that big front arrives this evening. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today is going to be as warm as yesterday. We did make it up to 77 yesterday. We're going to be in that ballpark again, which is within two degrees of the record for today's date. Right now we are at 42 degrees. And just to kind of uh, keep comparing to yesterday, we started off in the mid 30s yesterday and got up into the upper 70s. So a 40 degree temperature temperature rise and that's about what we're going to be seeing today 35 40 degree swing in temperatures and pretty much that can, is due uh, to the fact that the dew point that bottom number there is so low the air is very very dry out there and we're going to like I said make it up into the upper 70s but then that all changes right around midnight when that front comes on through the aquifer yesterday dropped down three tenths of a foot and the allergens mountain cedar came down moderate and mold is also on the low side. It's going to be interesting to see what happens to the mountain cedar count after the windy conditions tomorrow. First of all, wind chill temperatures, a little bit of a breeze, not much in the hill country, which is why we've got those freezing readings out there close to freezing Bernie stage, Ball Verde. It feels like 39 out there at the airport, just a, a puff of a breeze. Wind chill right now is 29 at Hondo. All right. All right, this is jumping ahead to tomorrow. Wind advisory it goes into effect at midnight up until six o'clock tomorrow evening and it's for all of the area then that kind of gets bumped up a little bit with fire weather watch off in our western counties winds are going to be gusting 40 to 50 miles per hour and it's not just going to be during the daylight hours but overnight once that front moves on through so in the wee hours tomorrow morning it's really going to start to shake in the trees and kind of rattling your windows today though sunny warm that cold front again just after midnight colder tomorrow by about 20 degrees, only in the upper 50s for a high temperature tomorrow. And again, those 40 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts and then wind's going to settle down overnight. We will hit freezing Sunday morning here in town down in the 20s. Pretty good hard freeze in the hill country. And once again, make it to the upper 50s. Then we'll start off next week, the work week. Well, even though everybody has the day off on Monday for the holiday, cold start, close to freezing once again. We'll warm up the next couple of days, preceding the next front that comes through late next week, probably about to Thursday sometime. Anything in the form of rain out there? We'll take a look ahead in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, good morning, sir. Anything going on? Well, uh, Mike, I wouldn't say this is the best way to start the morning. We're taking a look here at 1604 at Braun. We have a crash that uh, looks pretty serious from what we've been able to see here from this shot at Transguide. You can see we have several road flares placed along 1604, as well as first responders who are working to clear things up. I know this call came in sometime after 430 this morning. Wasn't seeing so much of an impact in the, any of the lanes of 1604, but this is over there on the northwest side. Closest shot trans guide can provide us at this hour, but let's go ahead and take you to the map because that crash has been detected right at New Gilbo Road. Now we're still trying to pinpoint the exact location where this crash has occurred, but be, stay with us because we are starting to see a buildup there along those southbound lanes of 1604. So we're going to watch this crash very closely. We know this tends to pick up as the morning does go on, but as we push out of the map and show you a little bit more of how the morning's looking, we are in good shape. Green roads, which means an easy commute to 
wherever you need to head, maybe to the coffee store, or maybe to head to work a little bit later. Right now, if your travels do take you through San Antonio, we have 25 minutes coming in from I-10 eastbound from to the downtown San Antonio area. We're also looking at 26 minutes coming in from 281 and Bulverde in those southbound lanes and southbound on I-35 coming in from New Braunfels, 26 minutes at this hour. So not too worried about those inbound times, but this is going to be the situation at this hour. 1604 Braun is the shot at Transguide. Again, a crash. We're going to continue to watch closely here on GMSA. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a house fire on the city's north side has San Antonio fire officials reminding people about how dangerous your chimney can be if it's not properly taken care of. And our Jonathan Cotto joins us live now. Good morning, Jonathan. And do investigators know how this house fire started? Good morning, Stephanie. Well, we've actually learned that it was the duct or what they call a flue that's inside the chimney that caused the fire. Now, fire investigators are telling us that flue separated from the chimney, allowing the fire to go inside the attic. Let's take a look at what that scene looked like. Firefighters responding to the scene around 10 o'clock last night. Crews on scene say it was actually the ground shifting that caused the separation of the duct and the chimney. Firefighters were able to quickly knock down the flames at this northeast side home located on the 200 block of Windale Street. That's near Loop 410, not far from the San Antonio airport. Now, winter is the time of year where more home fires happen than any other season. In fact, fire experts say one in every seven home fires and one in every five home fire deaths involve heating equipment. Fire officials say that if you live in an area that has ground shifting, which they say is pretty much all of San Antonio, they urge you to hire an expert who can drop a camera down the chimney for inspection to make sure your fireplace is safe before using. Now, some important things to keep in mind while staying warm, put space heaters on a flat surface and keep it at least three feet from anything that can burn. Also, make sure the heater is turned off and unplugged when you leave a room or go to bed. Have a qualified professional inspect your chimney and vents every year, and also be sure to install a test carbon monoxide alarms at least once a month. And lastly, never use your oven to heat your home. Mark, Stephanie, no injuries were reported at this fire right now. Fire investigators are estimating roughly $20,000 in damages. Reporting live from the city's north side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Jonathan, thank you for the update. Here's a look at the local COVID numbers this morning. 982 people in our local hospitals, 205 are in ICU, 73 on ventilators. Our seven day average shows we continue to see more than 4,800 new COVID cases each day. And Seguin ISD says all schools and offices will be closed today. Superintendent Matthew Gugieta says the increase of COVID cases is the reason why. The district hopes students and staff will take this time to recover and rest. Schools are expected to resume again on Tuesday, January 18th. Well, this morning, the Biden administration is recalibrating its COVID control plans after the U.S. Supreme Court dealt a blow to the president's vaccine mandate for workers at large private businesses. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the details. This morning, a newly published pre-Omicron Scotland study found unvaccinated pregnant women with COVID and their newborn babies have a higher risk of complications like hospitalizations and death from the virus compared to those who are vaccinated. Right now, more than 20% of Americans eligible for the shots have yet to get at least one dose. Thursday, the U.S. Supreme Court ruling that an estimated 80 million workers in the private sector are free from a federal vaccine mandate. The Biden administration order would have required the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, also known as OSHA, to force large businesses to ensure their workers are vaccinated against COVID or submit to weekly testing and wear masks. OSHA has not uh, traditionally mandated other vaccines for other hazards that could be posed with grave risk, some might say. The flu kills people every year. Other grave diseases do too. The Labor Secretary calling the ruling a major setback to the health and safety of workers. The justices, though, are allowing the Biden administration to enforce a different mandate on health care workers. The president saying the decision will save lives. Biden also announcing more help is on the way, including military medical teams fanning out to help overwhelmed hospitals with critical staff shortages and a total of one million free at home COVID tests soon to be available through a government website launching next week. In the hospitals, as the Omicron variant surge continues, doctors say they're seeing more kids sick with COVID than ever before. We watch them struggle to breathe. And then on top of that, we watch their parents struggle. 
And this morning, the White House says the administration has a stockpile of more than 750 million high-quality masks like the N95 available, but it's unclear if and how Americans can actually get their hands on them. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. 509, about 42 degrees. And coming up next, how the city of San Antonio is connecting more trail systems to local parks and neighborhoods. Outside with live cam, another pretty good day for your Friday. Then things change radically in the overnight hours. By the time you wake up tomorrow morning, a very gusty situation and perhaps dangerous. We'll talk more about it with Mike coming up. Welcome back on your Friday morning. The city of San Antonio has made it a goal to connect more trail systems to local parks and neighborhoods to promote healthy living. And part of this plan includes beautifying city parks with art and cultural installations. Sarah Costa has more. If you have walked or ran on one of the many San Antonio trails or parks, you may have noticed these larger than life flower sculptures depicting South Texas native flowers. No, they did not bloom overnight. The seeds to have them installed have been part of a five year planning process. San Antonio's Department of Arts and Culture, along with the city's Parks and Recreation Department, were looking for ways to enhance local parks and greenways with public art. The goal to increase neighborhood connectivity, create a visual identity for the linear creeks and to place more art on greenway trails. It's how the Bloom Sculpture series came to life. The first one being planted at Mud Creek and McAllister Park in 2019. With the help of input from residents about which indigenous flowers to create, San Antonio artist Leticia Huerta and Wonderlust Ironworks brought the radiant oversized metal flowers to life. I'm really proud of it because it's my first large scale freestanding sculpture as a public art project. Figuring out how to make something three dimensional, at least for me, who uh, I'm not a sculptor. And so I'm proud of that effort and I'm proud of how well received that project has been. Huerta worked with Wonderlust Ironworks to create the flowers by resembling larger than life bicycle parts. Currently, you can see the blooms at five city parks, the most recent installation at Farias Park and Brazos Pocket Park on the city's west side. Two more installations will be complete by this summer at Salado Creek at Southside Lions Park and Leon Creek at Tezzle Road Facility. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Beautiful. 514, about 42 degrees. And coming up, we're going to tell you about Instacart's new service that lets you order prepared meals from local grocery stores. And everybody's favorite YouTube video, Baby Shark, is making history. Guess how many times it's been viewed on YouTube? We have the answer next. <laughs> huh. Is that true? Geico's been saving folks money for 85 years? Yep, that's right. Wait, so if Geico's 85, that makes you... Are you asking if I'm 85 years old? <laughs> I mean, sea turtles live to be 150, so... <laughs> no, I, I, was, I was not. Do I look 85? What? No! You don't... You look young. You, 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 you look young for however old you are. Geico. Saving people money for 85 years. Got my hair, got my head, got my brains, got my head, got my heart, got my soul, got my mind. I'm surprising my team with a preview of the latest sneaker drop because I can answer any question about any shoe, but I'm stumped when it comes to payroll. Intuit QuickBooks helps you easily run payroll in less than five minutes, so you can stay one step ahead. In today's Tech Bytes, Twitter is now letting all users record spaces. The record feature was initially available to a limited number of hosts. Now anyone using iOS or Android to set up a space can choose to record it. And it will be available for the public to play back for 30 days. Instacart is expanding its ordering options. The grocery delivery service just opened its Ready Meals Hub, allowing users to order hot and pre-made meals from a local grocer. It involves partnerships with a growing list of grocery chains. Deliveries are said to arrive in as little as 30 minutes. Finally, if you thought the baby shark phenomenon would be a passing fad, think again. The video just made history as the first on YouTube to hit 10 billion views. And even Nickelodeon is working on a baby shark movie. I guess you could say baby shark is now a starfish. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. 
And we're sorry if that's your earworm for most of the day now. <laughs> yeah, I can see how it hit, hit history already. It, it happens, yeah. Yeah, let's go. I was looking at the rose out with Transguide from this angle. Doesn't look like anything's too bad out there. Most spots, but I have to talk about that baby shark uh, story really quick because my nephew loved that song when he was a baby. Yep. And uh, now he's at he's six years old. He's not so much of a fan of it, but he's got a little sister, so now our family loves to sing it to her. Yeah. So it's not how many times you watch it, it's how many times you sing it, and that's countless. So, yes. <laughs> All right, let's get a quick look at the roadways because things are swimming over here. As you can see, traffic's not looking too bad off US 90 at 36. We're seeing places that, uh, where it's pretty quiet, but it is still very early in the morning, so we're not necessarily expecting to see a whole lot of activity out there, but there are issues out there. Check out 1604 at Hosman. That's actually a problem spot that we've been talking about. There at Braun is a shot where that crowd Crash has been reported. Now we're going to take you to the map because Texan has pinpointed that crash at 1604 westbound at Braun Road. Now we're not seeing a buildup just yet, but of course there are still first responders that are out there, so you got to give them plenty of room to get this situation cleared up because as the morning does go on, this could possibly present an issue for anyone that has to head through uh, 1604 later this morning. So we'll watch that closely. Why to look at the map does show we're still off to a green start, but I do want to actually push a little bit further in to 60. Uh, pardon me, 1604 here on the north side for some signage installation. Now that's going to actually lead to an alternating eastbound main lane closure from Stone Oak Parkway to 281. Now that will be taking place tomorrow and wrapping up Sunday on January 16th, but this is going to be continuous. So we'll continue to see that from nine in the morning to three in the afternoon. So if you have weekend plans to take you through this side, make sure that you're planning accordingly or pack your patience. One last look around town 410 at Babcock. The morning is getting moving, but most of these shots look pretty fine. Guys, what would be the most least desirable earworm? Baby Shark, Gangnam Style, or um, Gangnam Style, my or uh, uh, Macarena. <laughs> oh, I, like mm, I think it's a three-way tie there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I could go all day with probably without any of those. Yeah, I'm gonna start singing Baby Shark to do throughout uh, the morning. Please there don't. <laughs> please don't. <laughs> go to your sister's house. Do, 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 do. <laughs> He's gonna hit you back with Macarena all day long. <laughs> I want Just to be gang prepared. Gangnam style. I'd like to see that. <laughs> I've got the wiggle songs locked and loaded. <laughs> so. The wiggles. <laughs> that cut the grass and come into my. Anyway, uh, yeah, there's. I love the name Cujo. Remember that movie? Yeah. Oh, I remember yes. that one. That Way does back not look when, like yeah. a Cujo. No. 17 years old. You deserve a nice little nap. Oh, happy birthday. Cu 17. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I know. That's old for a pooch. All right, thank you for the KSAC Connect picture. Um, good day to take a nap tomorrow and just kind of uh, put a blanket over your head because it's going to be windy. It's going to be colder, but uh, the wind is going to be the biggest problem. We've got clear skies right now. Temperatures at 42. We've actually uh, fluctuated just a little bit in the past hour. Still just below freezing. Comfort Kerrville and close to it, Bolverde, Banderas, or in your backyard, it may be freezing because those are just, you know, it's just one thermometer and could be right down the street. Temperature is a little bit different. All right, we've got some dry air upstairs in the atmosphere right now. A little bit of moisture aloft is coming on in here, so maybe a stray cloud or two, some high clouds later on today as well as tonight, but not anything uh, not anything that's going to produce any rain, unfortunately. All right, we've got dry air in place, and that is the nice thing when temperatures got up into the 70s yesterday, unlike the past few times when we've had those quick warm-ups, the humidity did not follow right you know on his heels so we stayed very pleasant yesterday that'll be the case today as well now tonight the front is going to move through the hill country obviously sooner comes through town about midnight tomorrow morning and then throughout the morning hours and all day long we are going to have very very windy conditions winds about uh, 20 30 miles per hour gusts 40 close to 50 miles per hour at times that's going to be the case all day long and these dew point temperatures measure of moisture in the atmosphere are going to be just bone dry and as temperatures try to warm into the upper 50s relative humidity is going to be extremely low so therefore that is going to increase the fire danger out to the west obviously we have wind advisories in effect then the wind is going to start to settle down overnight into Sunday morning and that's when we're going to be getting close to uh, freezing around a good chunk of the area. So today, 70 at noon, huge warm up this morning. I mean, you can probably watch the thermometer go up throughout the, uh, the morning hours once the sun comes up and then 77 for a high temperature today. The record is 79, really close to it. Then the front comes through later on tonight. Very windy conditions. Like I said, tomorrow winds gusting 40 to 50 miles per hour. Wind advisory for all of the area. 
and a fire weather watch for our western counties that may get bumped up to a red flag warning uh, throughout the day tomorrow or even later on today. So just we'll keep you on top of that. The front will knock temperatures down about 20 degrees tomorrow, 57 for a high temperature and then down to freezing Sunday morning. Close to it Monday morning we will warm right back up. And then the next front comes through here. Hopefully the one Thursday brings a little bit of rain with it, maybe Thursday into Friday, because one coming through tonight, it's not going to do anything but just really shake the trees. It'll be interesting to see what the mountain cedar count is Sunday. Or well, actually tomorrow, too, because it's mm -hmm. going to be windy in the overnight hours. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah, I'm just worried about all those grass fires we might see tomorrow. People yep. careless with their cigarettes, things like that. It, don't do it. It's yeah. okay. some of the windiest conditions that we've seen a long time around yeah. here. Please help out if you can. Be safe tomorrow. 525, about 42 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, The Godfather is returning to theaters for its 50th anniversary. An all-time classic movie celebrating a half century. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in the Hollywood Minute. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. The Godfather opened 50 years ago this spring. To mark the anniversary, Paramount is re-releasing the Oscar-winning classic for a limited theatrical run beginning February 25th. Paramount and Francis Ford Coppola's production company spent three years restoring all three films in the trilogy, which they're releasing on 4K Ultra HD on March 22nd. Once again, America is having to look at issues of race dead in the eye, and once again, we are at a tipping point. And the question for all of us in this room is, what are we going to do about it? Civil rights lawyer Jeffrey Robinson makes his case to the American people in Who We Are, which traces racism in the U.S. from the first slave ships to the present day. The critically acclaimed documentary opens in New York and Los Angeles this weekend and more widely in the coming weeks. And this Saturday night, January 15th, it'll play in 250 AMC theaters across the U.S. ahead of Martin Luther King Jr. Day on Monday. Info and tickets at amctheaters.com. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Time now, 529 and about 42 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, we'll take a look at the aftermath from a landmark sedition indictment regarding the riots at the Capitol last year. And are you ready to buy some candles that smell like your favorite soup? We're going to tell you how much it's going to cost you to make your house smell like chicken noodle. It may be early, but an arsonist has already been at work. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Firefighters say it's not the first time this business has been hit. I'll tell you more about it. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're starting at 42 degrees. I'm looking forward to another warm up, although that's only going to be for today. Yeah, rather temporary as we go into the weekend. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday, January 14th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy today because tomorrow a lot of changes to watch out for. And you won't be asking the typical question. When's that cold front going to be no. here? Oh, <laughs> we'll know. Yeah, you'll yes. know when it comes through because the wind is just going to be howling. And here in town, it's going to be about midnight as it moves on through obviously a little bit sooner in the hill country and yes the wind is going to pick up and it's going to be then very very windy in the overnight hours and all the way through the day tomorrow more on that in a second first of all lots of clear skies out there right now temperature at the airport stands at 42 degrees so we're just about at a normal low temperature the humid dew point temperature is down to 32 so we still have some fairly dry air in place and a little bit of a breeze out there so in some places there's a slight bit of a wind chill like here in town it is actually though freezing comfort Kerrville close to it um, Balverde Bernie stage and uh, 33 in Bandera 29 is the wind chill right now in Hondo throughout the rest of today another huge warm up temperatures are just going to be just going up by leaps and bounds throughout the morning hours up to 70 already at noon then we top off at 77 same as yesterday and the record today by the way is 79 degrees so we're going to be very close to that clear skies overnight tonight and temperatures will drop off fairly quickly so once again like last night once that sun starts to uh, get a little bit lower in the sky it is going to cool off fairly quickly. Then that front moves on through here and windy conditions. Wind advisories are in effect starting at midnight through six o'clock tomorrow evening for all of the area. Fire weather watch off to the west. We're looking at wind gusts about 40 to 50 miles per hour. So ounce of prevention. 
batten everything down today so it doesn't blow away overnight and tomorrow. Then we're looking at a freeze later on in the weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, he had a little bit of a problem last half hour, right? Yeah, I think it's uh, slowly resolving, Mike. Uh, we do have a crash over on the northwest side. We'll take a look at that in just a moment, but I do want to talk about how we are shaping up for a Friday morning because most of these shots at Transguide look like a copy and paste of what we showed you a little bit earlier. Just a few folks out there, 281 at Hildebrand. You can see not a lot of people getting their morning started early with us, but there are a few folks out there. And if you are going to be heading out on the road in the next few moments, you got to be on the lookout because we do have a crash over there here off 1604. I should actually bring your attention to the map uh, there on those westbound lanes at Braun Road. Now we're not seeing a buildup just yet, but we know that first responders are still out there working to clear things up. So hopefully we will see some resolution in the next few minutes as the morning does go on. But as we push out of the map, we do see we have been off to a pretty decent start as people are driving off into their weekend. And as we take a look at these inbound times, if your destination is here in the Alamo City, well, we have those inbound times. I-10 westbound coming in from Seguin, still pretty green with 29 minutes at this hour, 22 coming in from 87 and Lavernia in those northbound lanes. And if you're traveling through Flotusville, you only have 28 minutes right now to get to San Antonio. So not too bad as we're getting this new day started. But again, we're going to watch that situation off 1604. But for now, the roads are so quiet. We'll take a look at gas prices if, coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Stephen, thank you very much. Starting today, CPS Energy will start planning out its next steps to upgrade utility operations. That's following a rate hike approval of 3.8% by the San Antonio City Council yesterday. The approval is for a rate and fuel cost increase. It'll pay to begin exploring the plan on how to upgrade to its infrastructure and technology. That also includes pay increases for those on the front line of its operation, plus the hiring of 400 workers, but does not pay for the actual plan to upgrade the system. That will come in the form of more rate increases in the next four years. There are financial implications for our customers when we make the decision on what we're going to do with Spruce, which, which is why it's taken this long to get to this point. The CPS Energy Board of Trustees also expected to discuss investigations into the company's operations during its next board meeting. What happened at the U.S. Capitol a year ago will be the focus of conversations in a North Texas courtroom this afternoon. The leader of a group known as the Oath Keepers will face a judge after being indicted on charges including seditious conspiracy in the Capitol attack. CNN's Britt Conway explains what all this means and what could happen next. January 6, 2021, chaos on Capitol Hill. Among the thousands there that day, a far-right group called the Oath Keepers. You can see them forcing their way into the building in a military stack formation. It overran the Capitol. Now, more than a year later, the Justice Department has charged the leader of that group, Stuart Rhodes, along with 10 other members with seditious conspiracy related to the Capitol attack. This is a very important statement about the severity of the crimes and the severity of, of the attack on the Capitol. Sedition is characterized by the U.S. Code as two or more people who conspire to overthrow the U.S. government or prevent, hinder, or delay the execution of U.S. law by force. It's punishable by a fine and up to 20 years in prison. So why now? They just needed to make sure they had an airtight case. Who knows if they do? Well, we, you know, we'll see what evidence they come forward with, but this is evidence that they're probably building a larger conspiracy case. It won't be easy. Seditious conspiracy is rarely charged, politically loaded, and hard to prove in court, something Rhodes' lawyer plans to use in his defense. Those are very serious charges, but, but we do believe they, they have to prove it. And um, I know from the documents that they have, they knew in last May and, and March that they came to be support services for demonstrations. But as this plays out, one big question, could Rhodes have information that implicates anyone else? I'm Britt Conway reporting. Well, SpaceX, I'm sorry. SpaceX is sending more than 100 satellites into space. A SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket launched the Transporter 3 out of Florida yesterday, along with it, a batch of 105 small satellites that will be sent into a low Earth orbit. It's part of a new rideshare program by SpaceX to give smaller companies and individuals the ability to launch observational satellites into space. A Superman comic book just sold for, ready for this, $3.18 million, making it the third most expensive comic of all time. The 1938 comic features the first appearance of the Man of Steel and originally cost 10 cents. It was bought by a collectibles marketplace, Golden 
on behalf of a private buyer. According to The Hollywood Reporter, this particular copy is called the Rocket Copy because the cover features a rocket stamp put there by a 13-year-old who purchased the issue from a newsstand in 1938. Ten cents. What was that total again? 3.18 <laughs> million? To 3.18 million. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Big change there. Time now, 539 and 42 degrees for now. Still ahead, if you don't have time to make soup, you can still make your home smell like soup. We'll tell you about Campbell's Candles. And also ahead, why now is the best time to get back in touch with your doctor to get important information. Taking a look outside with live cam, we're at 42 degrees right now. Starting off to a cold day. Uh, things will warm up though. Be prepared for that. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 542. San Antonio fire investigators, investigators say it looks like a case of arson. They believe someone intentionally set fire to a former restaurant on the northwest side. That fire broke out around 1 this morning near Loop 410 and Babcock Road. Our Katrina Weber is live where it all happened. And Katrina, how did anyone notice that the fire was inside what seems to be an abandoned building? Well, from what we've been told, a San Antonio police officer happened to be driving by, noticed the smoke coming from here, and called it in. And when firefighters got here, they realized they had an actual fire inside this building. But they say it looks like someone threw a Molotov cocktail through a window of what used to be Joe's Crab Shack. That started the fire, but also triggered the sprinkler system, and then that did most of the work for firefighters. The restaurant had been closed and boarded up for some time, so there was no one working here and no other buildings in this area were threatened. Now, there are still several inches of water inside that building that we can see, but we really can't see any damage inside. Firefighters say this is the second time someone has targeted this building in the last few months, but so far they have not made any arrests in connection with these suspicious fires here. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Katrina. Time now, 543 and about 42 degrees out there. Up next, how you can fill your kitchen and your home with a scent of chicken noodle soup just by striking a match. And welcome back. It's 546. In your morning consumer headlines, everything is getting more expensive, including the cost of borrowing money to buy a home. Mortgage rates are now at the highest level since March of 2020. The 30 year fixed mortgage averaged 3.45% in the week ending January 13th. And according to Freddie Mac, that's up from an average of 3.2% from the prior week. Freddie Mac's chief economist says the increase was driven by expectations that the Federal Reserve will more quickly rein in its stimulus. The jump in mortgage rates comes at a time of higher home prices and a near record low inventory. After 72 years, the FDA is deregulating a once popular salad dressing. French dressing no longer required to have at least 35 percent vegetable oil. The FDA revoking a standard set back in 1950 that critics claim was limiting innovation in the food service industry. A group called the Association of Dressing and Sauces has been trying to change the rules since 1998. With the FDA's old standard of identity gone, French dressing can have less vegetable oil or even more tomato paste in its recipe. Also, some products labeled imitation French dressing can now officially drop the word imitation. For anyone who's ever wanted to fill their home with the smell of chicken noodle soup without having to actually make it, Campbell? They have you covered. The company is launching candles that smell like some of its signature products. You can get the aforementioned chicken noodle or tomato soup and grilled cheese. The latter saves you the trouble of making both a can of soup and a sandwich. You even open the candle like a can of soup by peeling off the lid. Of course, it'll also cost you a little bit more. The candles are going for $24 a pop. Wow, what? the company appears <laughs> to understand this is a niche item and it's only making 2,000 of them. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, for $24 a pop, it's definitely I, a niche item. Yeah, just a no novelty of it, I guess. Yeah. So if you're on a diet, we could really drive yourself crazy. Put on that that KFC fire log and then light one of these candles somewhere too. I, I know. Yesterday we had a story about sodium, so we have to cut back. I guess we'll just light the candles. Yes, Is there Mike. A baking, candle? a baking? I'm sure. There might be a bean with baking candle. I don't know. Uh, if yeah, yeah, go okay, too much. 548, about 41 degrees. That's a no for me. I'm not. I'm not a fan of uh, tomato soup. But yeah. I love grilled cheese. But then wow. you're gonna want to you're gonna want to eat it. And 24 bucks, so you might as well just go buy a can of soup for 99 cents. I agree, but those are cute candles to look at.
to look at, but not to taste. <laughs> Maybe right? decoration, I guess. <laughs> well, if you were on your way to go grab a can of soup or maybe a cup of coffee this morning, let's take a look at the roadways right now. 410 at Babcock, things have been shaping up to look quite nice. And a lot of these shots that we've been seeing here from our friends that have provided us these shots again from Trans Guide, 410 North at Ingram, pretty empty though. We're not really seeing a whole lot of people out there. We are getting closer to 6 a.m., so that obviously will change in the next few minutes when more people get out on the roads. However, we did have an incident off 16 four that looks like it has cleared out that crash off the westbound lanes near Braun Road wasn't really causing so much of a buildup, but there were first responders there for quite a while, so it looks like that scene may have cleared. There may be one or two left, but right now not causing any issues. We're going to clear this from our system in the next few minutes, but a wider look at the map as we continue to show you is definitely in good shape here. We're seeing a lot of green lanes, obviously meaning that we're not seeing any slowdown with traffic just yet, but if you plan to head to the gas station for an upcoming road trip, we have those in those gas prices from AAA as of today, they are reporting the average gas price in Bear County is 286. Now around the country, we're looking at 292 and the country, or pardon me, the state 292 and the country, we are looking at 330. Now that's largely due to those crude oil prices, which have been going up. So we'll continue to watch those gas prices closely over the next few days, as well as these roadways. But right now we're in good shape, guys. Yes, we are. Thank you, Stephen. Very Texas behind you. <laughs> yes, indeed. Especially if you're a Texas alum, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who's watching whom? Great. Look at the horns on that thing. That's a beautiful picture. Thank you very much for that one. All right. Uh, the advice today is anything that the wind can blow around, tie it down, put it away, whatever the case is today, because overnight it uh, may not be in your backyard once that front moves on through here. Got a lot of clear skies, going to have a beautiful sunrise this morning, uh, maybe a couple of high clouds out there throughout the day. We do actually have some fog down here along the coastal plain. Uh, Beeville at quarter mile visibility, same thing in Corpus Christi right now, a little bit around Victoria. That's going to stay uh, pretty much confined, should say confined down there to the uh, southeast. Yesterday, we got up to 77 degrees, a lot of upper 70s, couple of 80s around. That's going to be the case again today. The record here in town is 79 out there at the airport, so we're going to be obviously very close to that. And we'll still have low humidity, so it's still going to be very comfortable out there. That's been the nice thing with this warm up yesterday as well as today is that the humidity didn't follow suit with really kind of shooting up. So we keep the dew point temperatures very, very low. Wind remains out of the oh, kind of the south, maybe uh, kind of getting a little southwesterly later on today. The front will move through about midnight here in town sooner late this evening by about the news time tonight. It's probably going to be knocking on the door of the hill country and then it's going to move through in the overnight hours and just blast on down to the south and to the southeast. Wind is going to be very strong overnight once that front moves on through here and then throughout the day tomorrow and we're going to see wind gusts about mm, maybe 40 50 miles per hour sustained winds 20 30 35 miles per hour and very very dry air out there to the west with those dew points down in the low teens which means we're going to be seeing a very high fire danger off to the west of us nothing obviously showing up in the satellite picture right now and there is a system which is this blow up here which is developing that's not going to really come on top of us but that's what's going to be throwing that front down through here and yes, this will be one that you notice when that comes on through. It's going to be rattling the windows later on tonight. 70 today at noon. Sunny skies. Temperatures are really, really going to warm up quickly. Again, we're going to see almost a 40 degree swing in temperatures from the low to the high later on today. A high of 77, close to the record. Then midnight through six o'clock tomorrow evening, wind advisory for all of the area. Fire weather watch in our western counties, that sort of lighter shade of tan. 40 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts tomorrow. Highs tomorrow, 20 degrees lower than today. And we'll start off right around mid 40s. So it's going to be brisk throughout the day tomorrow. Freezing Sunday morning after the wind subside overnight and close to freezing again Monday morning. We'll warm up midweek, another front late next week. Wow, a whole lot going on in that yeah. forecast, Mike. Yeah, but seriously, get ready for that front tonight. I mean, everything's just going to be, you know, blown around tomorrow. We're probably going to have a lot of, you know, little twigs and limbs down as well. Sounds like you should go yeah. into driving tomorrow with uh, the, the, the thought in mind of keeping both hands on the steering wheel at all oh times. Goodness. Yes. I know. I have a run scheduled for tomorrow morning. I don't mm -hmm. know about that. It's going to be run kind of... Run with the wind. I yeah. Was gonna say. yeah. <laughs> Not against it, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, we told it it's going to go much easier with the wind at your back. 552, three rather, 50, 41 degrees. And still ahead, we're going to have a first look at a trio of new video games that are now playable this week.
is long and unforgiving. No place for a boy. You must be a warrior. The multiple award-winning God of War is now on PC. Previously exclusive to the PlayStation, the game finds former Greek God of War Kratos and his son on a quest based loosely around Norse mythology. Sharp-eared sci-fi fans will recognize Stargate actor Christopher Judge as Kratos. Welcome, fearless leader. We have waited for this day for all of our mushroom lives. Mushroom Wars 2 first sprouted on the PC in 2017 and later on the Nintendo Switch. The fighting fungi are now spawning on Xbox and PlayStation consoles. The real-time strategy and resource management game pits players in single and multiplayer battles. Planetary exploration and terraforming are at the core of Astroneer. The open-world sandbox game lets players colonize procedurally generated planets at their own pace without a fixed plotline. Previously available for Xbox and PlayStation, Astroneer is now portable on the Nintendo Switch. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Still ahead on GMSA this morning, coronavirus hitting Texas classrooms very hard right now. We have details on schools that are struggling to stay open. Trans guide right now. See how things are looking out there as we switch to one of those cameras around town. And there is 35 at Flores. No problems to report there. Stevens back with a look at that. And again, high fire danger heading into our Saturday around South Texas. Mike has more coming up on GMSA. Coming up next, some important tips to keep in mind while you keep warm. What we've learned from the fire department. A loss and a partial victory at the U.S. Supreme Court for President Biden's vaccine mandate plans. I'm ABC's Faith Abube with the latest coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. Again, we are starting chilly at 40 degrees. Looking forward to the warm up, although it will be temporary. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It's Friday, January 14th. It's Friday. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, a lot of changes, though, with the weather. Yeah, it's about to rattle the house. Mike, when is that very strong front and the gusty winds going to arrive around here? Here in town, midnight. Midnight tonight. Obviously sooner in the hill country. I was just about to send out a push alert and the uh, kind of the, the title that pops up. It was going to be near record heat, windy, high fire danger, uh, we gust 50 miles per hour and freezing temperatures all in the next couple of days. Is that all, Mike? That's it. Yeah. Okay. For now. Uh, so, yeah, for now. Starting off, unfortunately, no rain at all. We'll talk more about that. But clear skies right now. Beautiful start this morning. And once again, like yesterday, we're going to be seeing 35 to 40 degree swing in temperatures between the lows this morning and the high later on today. 31 right now in Balverde. Same thing, Comfort Freezing, Kerrville, close to it, Bernie Stage, Bandera. And it may be freezing in your backyard. And and in some of these areas, 39 now at the airport and a little bit of a breeze, not much, mostly calm or no light, very light wind. And that's what's allowing the coldest, heaviest air to sink down here to the surface. But uh, in some spots, there is a little bit of a wind chill. Feels like 36 out there, 33 at Randolph. And throughout the rest of today, temperatures will stay mm, about steady where they are right now, maybe fluctuate a couple of degrees. And then temperatures are just going to be going up by leaps and bounds throughout the rest of the morning. You probably watch the thermometer go up. We'll make it up to 70 today at noon. Top off at 77 like yesterday. The record today is 79 degrees. Degrees. So we're going to be knocking on the door of that winds out of the south to southwest primarily. And then that front moves through, like I said, about midnight. And once that comes through, you are definitely going to notice it. It will rattle the windows. Boy, put everything away that can be blown around by the wind later on today, because by tomorrow morning, it may not be in your backyard. 40 to 50 mile per hour wind gust wind advisory throughout the entire area from midnight till six o'clock and then for our kind of the western or southwestern half of the area, this lighter shade right there, that's the fire weather watch that's in effect also from midnight up until 6 o'clock tomorrow. It is going to be windy. Then we have the freezing temperatures in behind that. We'll talk more about that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, any big problems out there, sir? Yeah, Michael, that's going on weather-wise. Right now, traffic talk. We're not looking at a whole lot of issues right now. This is a shot from I-10 at Frio. We're going to get to that in just a moment, but let's take a quick look around town. There's 
there's 35 at Topper Wine. We are seeing people getting out. As I mentioned earlier, 6 a.m. is when we really start to things start. Uh, we really start to see things moving. That is, as you can see, 35 at New Braunfels. The morning is getting going. Now we were looking at that shot from I-10 at Frio. Didn't look like there was a lot going on out there, but TxDOT has listed a crash right in those westbound lanes of I-10 again at Frio Street. We aren't seeing anything there just yet, but we're going to label that and watch it very closely as the morning does go on. But as we push out, show you the wider look of the map. We're still in really great shape as we are starting this new hour. Not seeing any issues that would cause any impact when it comes to that morning uh, drive time right now. And if your travels are taking you through San Antonio, well, we have those inbound times for you. These are gas prices. We'll get to those inbound times right now. 37 northbound, 28 minutes. Pleasant Drive coming in from Pleasanton. Right now, Highway 90. We're looking at 19 minutes if you're coming in from Castroville on those eastbound lanes. If you are traveling in from Lytle on 35, well, we are looking at 16 minutes. So we are in good shape. But again, we're going to watch that issue off of I-10. We'll find out how that's going to impact that morning drive coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, firefighters responding to a house fire on the city's north side. The incident prompting San Antonio fire officials to remind you how dangerous your chimney can be if not properly inspected before using it. Jonathan Cotto joins us live. Good morning. We understand the brunt of the damage was in the attic, but we know exactly what actually started the fire. Good morning, Mark. Well, we have learned that it was a duct or what they call a flu inside the chimney that started the fire. Fire investigators telling us that that duct separated from the chimney itself, allowing the fire to spread into the attic of this home. Now, this was the scene close to or shortly after 10 o'clock last night. Crews uh, on scene say it was actually the ground shifting that caused the separation of the duct from the chimney. Now, firefighters say they were able to quickly knock down the flames at this north side home located on the 200 block of Windell Street. That's near Loop 410, not far from the San Antonio airport. Now, winter is the time of year when more home fires happen than any other season. In fact, fire experts say one in every seven home fires and one in every five home fire deaths involve heating equipment. Now, fire officials say that if you live in an area that has ground shifting, which they say is pretty much all of San Antonio, they urge you to hire an expert who can drop a camera down the chimney and vents before use and recommend doing so every year. So some important things to keep in mind while staying warm, put space heaters on a flat surface and keep it at least three feet from anything that can burn. Also make sure the heater is turned off and unplugged when you leave a room or go to bed. Also be sure to install and test carbon monoxide alarms at least once a month. And lastly, never use your oven to heat your home. Mark Stephanie, no injuries were reported at this fire. Now, fire investigators are telling us they are estimating roughly $20,000 in damages. So get your inspections, keep warm, but most importantly, stay safe. Reporting live from the north side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you very much, Jonathan. New this morning, lots of questions following an overnight fire at a boarded up restaurant. Happened around one this morning at what used to be Joe's Crab Shack on Northwest Loop 410 at Callahan. Police tell us an officer driving by noticed smoke coming from the building. According to firefighters, the flames were mostly knocked out by the building's sprinkler system. Crusade appears someone threw some type of Molotov cocktail through a window. This is the second suspicious fire at that location within the last few months. A robbery suspect is now in custody. So this is 17 year old Francisco Allison. And according to an arrest affidavit, Allison and another man followed the victim into a bathroom during a party back in November. And that's when investigators say Allison pulled a gun, pointed it at the man's head and demanded his necklace and ring. After it was over, he told police Allison said not to say anything, but he told police anyway. Allison is charged with aggravated robbery. Suspects in a drive by shooting in the west side still on the loose. The home they targeted Wednesday morning had four people in it at the time. One woman was hit in the leg, but she's doing OK. Some who live in the 300 block of Dolores Avenue near Calabria fear another shooting could be around the corner and they might get caught in the crossfire. They go to target one home and innocent people get hurt, you know, and it's scary because you know, like I say, we've never experience something like that. You never know. No, so you can be walking and you can get shot too. I mean, so it's kind of scary too. You know? Our crews also spoke with a woman who lives uh, at the home off camera. She says she's not sure why they were being targeted, but whoever shot at them in the morning came back that same night around. Uh, San Antonio police believe there is no danger to the public and are calling the shooting an isolated incident. 
Tennis star Novak Djokovic faces deportation again after the Australian government revoked his visa for a second time. The Australian immigration minister says he used his ministerial discretion to revoke the 34-year-old's service visa on public interest grounds three days before the Australian Open is set to begin. The minister reiterated the Australian government's firm commitment to protecting borders, particularly in the relation to COVID-19 pandemic. Djokovic's lawyers are expected to appeal the cancellation in the federal circuit and family court as they successfully did after the first cancellation. Here's a look at the local COVID numbers here in Bear County. 982 people in local hospitals as of this morning. 205 are in intensive care. 73 are on ventilators. Doctors are also seeing more children in the hospital. Our seven day average shows we continue to see more than 4,800 new cases a day. And this morning, the Biden administration is re-collaborating its COVID control plans after the U.S. Supreme Court dealt a blow to President Biden's vaccine mandate for workers at large private businesses. The justices, however, allowing the federal government to require the shots for health care workers in federally funded hospitals and clinics. The ruling comes as the president is announcing new resources in the fight against the virus. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the details. A good morning. As the U.S. averages more than 761,000 new COVID cases a day, the Biden administration is now celebrating that partial court victory, allowing them to mandate the vaccine for some Americans. This morning, a newly published pre-Omicron Scotland study found unvaccinated pregnant women with COVID and their newborn babies have a higher risk of complications like hospitalizations and death. More than 20% of Americans eligible for the shots have yet to get at least one dose. Thursday, the U.S. Supreme Court ruling that an estimated 80 million workers in the private sector are free from a federal vaccine mandate. OSHA has not uh, traditionally mandated other vaccines for other hazards that could be pose a grave risk, some might say. The flu kills people every year. Other grave diseases do too. The justices, though, are allowing the Biden administration to enforce a different mandate on health care workers. The president announcing more help is on the way, including military medical teams and one million free at-home COVID tests. In the hospitals, doctors say they're seeing more kids sick with COVID than ever before. We watch them struggle to breathe. And then on top of that, we watch their parents struggle. And this morning, the White House says the administration has a stockpile of more than 750 million high quality masks like the N95 available. But it's unclear if and how Americans can actually get their hands on them. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. 610, about 40 degrees. And coming up a little later on GMSA, a man is in the hospital this morning after being stabbed last night on the city's northwest side. We're going to have the latest on his condition. Texas schools struggling to stay open due to staffing shortages amidst the surge of COVID cases. We'll have more on that. And taking a look outside with live cam, an interesting weather weekend. We're starting cold, it's going to get warm, and then lots of wind tomorrow. We're going to be checking in with Mike later on. Welcome back. The man who assassinated Senator Robert F. Kennedy has been officially denied parole. California's governor says it's reversed the decision by the uh, Board of Parole. I'm sorry, hang on one second here. Uh, the decision by the Board of Parole hearings to grant parole to Sirhan Sirhan. So, uh, California Governor Gavin Newsom says Sirhan has failed to address what led him to assassinate the senator in 1968. Sirhan has spent 53 years in prison for Kennedy's killing. The now 77-year-old ambushed Kennedy in the kitchen in the Ambassador Hotel in L.A. following a presidential campaign event. He was originally sentenced to death, but that was commuted to life in 1972 after the California State Supreme Court declared the death penalty unconstitutional. At least four rockets targeted the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad's heavily fortified Green Zone yesterday. The area is home to diplomatic missions and the seat of Iraq's government. Three of the missiles struck within the perimeter of the American Embassy. Another hit a school located in a nearby residential complex. An Iraqi military statement said a girl and a woman were injured in that attack. The attack is the latest in a series of rocket and drone attacks that have targeted the American presence in Iraq since the start of the year. New this morning on our website. New this morning on our website, Texas schools struggling to stay open as teachers and bus drivers continue to call in sick with COVID. 
Fort Worth's Northwest Independent School District is closing today through Wednesday after seeing a nearly 900% increase in cases since the winter break. At least 25 East Texas school districts have shut down for several days. You can read more about it on KSAT.com. Look for this story on our homepage. And at last check at those trans guide cameras, more vehicles on the roadways. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Something that we expect to see this morning, Mark and Stephanie, it's 6 a.m., a little bit after 6 a.m., I should say, and that means more people are out on the roadways. But let's take a look at I-10 at Frio. We told you about this spot a little bit earlier. Texon had listed a crash in that area, but they have since downgraded that to a stall. And we are seeing some flashing lights that looks like they just went on off in that shoulder lane. So hopefully that driver is receiving assistance, but you can see that traffic is moving through there and it is starting to pick up. Let's go ahead and take you to the map because that's right there in the westbound lanes of I-10 West at Frio. Again, not causing issues, but as you saw, there are people out on the roadways, so watch out for that. Now, let's take a jump up over here to <coughs> 281, probably 1604. We have some signage installation that will be going on this weekend. It's led to an alternating eastbound main lane closure from Stone Oak Parkway to 281. Now, this will be going on tomorrow, wrapping up on Sunday. That's going to be January 16th, but continuous from 9 in the morning till 3 in the afternoon. Something we'll watch closely. Wider look at the map, still in good shape, not spotting issues just yet, but we know with this hour, things can quickly change. Guys, thank you, Stephen. Uh, I wanted to tell Mike that uh, you know, far as labeling the coats, mm -hmm. you know, yesterday because I, I made sure, of course, we will make sure the kids' coats are labeled because they're they're not going to be wearing them in the afternoon. But actually, yesterday when I picked up my little girl, she was inside. She had everything on, and I was almost laughing because I picked her up. I was wearing shorts, <laughs> and she had her heavy coat on. I'm like, you can you can take it off now. <laughs> it's going to yeah. be the same thing today, I guess. Yeah, it's going to be the same thing today. Probably uh, by lunch, she won't need a coat because temperature is going to be up uh, close to 70. Actually, late this morning, temperatures are really just going to be just going up by leaps and bounds throughout the day. Uh, this morning, we're starting off here in town right around 40, upper 30s, and most of the clear skies. Got some freezing temperatures in parts of the hill country, and then, yeah, we're going to be going up about 40 degrees later on today, close to a record. The record 79. That's the same situation we had yesterday. We gained about 40 degrees or more throughout the course of the day. I love this. Got a new website. Get it? Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Check out the new website. I love that picture. Here, here. That's very cool looking. Thank you very much for that. All right. No glow of the uh, sunrise as of yet, but it is going to be a, a beautiful looking sunrise. And of course, the uh, we're all talking about that cold front, which is going to be moving through here. Then later on tonight here in town about midnight, obviously a little sooner in the hill country. Actually, by uh, news time tonight at 10 o'clock, we start to see the effects of that cold front moving through parts of the hill country. But throughout the rest of today, the nice thing is we're not going to see a huge return of the humidity. It's going to try and come in here along the, the coastal plain. And then as the front comes through, wind's going to be shifting around. You'll know when this thing comes through because it's immediately going to be like turning a fan on full blast. And those winds are going to be uh, out of the north, northwest, about, oh, say 20, 30 miles per hour. And then gusting on top of that throughout the day, we're going to see some wind gusts about 40 to 50 miles per hour. And the very, very dry air along with those winds, that is going to increase the fire danger, especially out in some of our western counties. The wind and the temperatures are going to be very dependent upon what the wind does overnight, but we're forecasting freezing by Sunday morning with those lighter winds. And as you can see, that dry air that's going to be in place all the way through Monday, it tries to make a return and then it's going to get knocked out of the picture again by uh, about late uh, Wednesday night, early Thursday with the next front. Nothing showing up on the uh, satellite picture right now, and we're really not going to see much of anything. I mean, maybe a couple of high wispy clouds out there, a little moisture is trying to come in upstairs in the atmosphere, but that'll be about it. Just going for basically sunny skies today, 70 at noon. So again, won't need a heavy jacket, <clears throat> excuse me, by noon, and then 77 high temperature. Record is 79. It's going to be a close one. Wind, the uh, front comes through here. Wind is going to be picking up. Wind advisory goes into effect at midnight up until 6 o'clock tomorrow evening. That's for all of the area. This lighter shade of tan from well, kind of the southwestern half of our viewing area. That's the fire weather watch that's also in effect up until six o'clock tomorrow evening. And those winds are going to be gusting about uh, 40 to 50 miles per hour. Far northwest of our viewing area, there is a red flag warning that's already uh, been issued out there for those windier conditions. We'll have to keep close tabs on the situation tomorrow. 57 high temperature, 20 degrees cooler than today. Going to get close to freezing Sunday morning, Monday morning here in town. Obviously, 20s in the hill country. Brief warm up, 
first part of the next week and then the next front late next week. Hopefully that one squeezes out some rain. This one is not going to, but yeah, very, very windy. Be extra careful if you are grilling tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Anything, no out, outdoor burning tomorrow. Please, please, please. Definitely a lot of fire danger there yeah. with the wind. Yep. Thank you, Mike. That's a jam packed forecast. Thank you, sir. 621 on your Friday morning, about 40 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the Houston Texans have joined the list of NFL teams who are looking for a new head coach. Details after the break. Why hide your skin? If Dupixin has your moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis under control. Hide my skin, not me. By hitting eczema where it counts, Dupixin helps heal your skin from within, keeping you one step ahead of eczema. Hide my skin, not me. And that means long-lasting, clearer skin and fast itch relief for adults. With Dupixin, you can show more skin with less eczema. Hide my skin, not me. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixin. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. When you help heal your skin from within, you can change how your skin looks and feels. And that's the kind of change you notice. Talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixin, a breakthrough eczema treatment. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Their season may be over, but the Texans are making headlines again this morning. The team has fired head coach David Culley. The move comes just four days after the regular season came to an end. Texans finished with a record of 4-13. and Culley wasn't the only staffer to be fired. Offensive coordinator Tim Kelly was also dismissed. Meanwhile, the Cowboys season not over as they get ready to host the Niners at AT&T Stadium this weekend in the first round of playoffs. Kickoff for that game is set for 3.30 on Sunday afternoon. A lot of people will be watching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Time now, 625 and about 40 degrees out there. We're going to have the latest on a stabbing that happened last night at a Northside apartment complex. One man in the hospital with life-threatening injuries. We're going to have the very latest. Plus, how much would you pay for a very valuable classic comic book? You won't believe how much this one sold for. Details to come. And we want to wish our viewer, Michael Jimenez, a very, very happy birthday, uh, turning 57 this year. And of course, uh, he's already ready for the game, wearing uh, Cowboys gear right there. Uh, also wanted to wish, wish uh, Greg Simmons a happy birthday. His birthday is also today. Our Greg Simmons? Our Greg Simmons. A lot of people with birthdays in January. Sorry, Greg, we buried the lead. Michael Jimenez <laughs> came first. We'll be right back. <laughs> that fire investigators are looking for an arsonist. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. They say someone has set fire to this building not once, but twice recently. I'll tell you more about it. And welcome back to you. It is 6.30 on your Friday, January 14th. Thanks for joining us. Happy Friday. We're going to check in on Mike and Stephen in just a minute. But first, we're going to tell you about uh, some cl uh, school closures today. Yeah, we do want to tell you that Seguin ISD says all schools and offices will be closed today. Their superintendent, Matthew Gutierrez, says the it's due to the increase of COVID cases out there. So despite their best efforts of trying to keep the school open, the district hopes students and staff will take this time to recover and rest. Schools are expected to resume again on Tuesday. That's January 18th. The big weather headline this morning, a big cold front is on the way. Mike Ostrand is standing by in the studio with more on that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, hear, I can't hear. I can't hear you. There you are. Oh, I said, hold my hand. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Can we? Anyway, <laughs> that's the uh, safest yeah, way the right now. Mike. It's going to be coming through <laughs> tonight, and uh, this morning we're starting off. It is beautiful out there. It is very chilly this morning, and temperatures are right now in the upper 30s. Dew points at 31, so we still have fairly dry air in place. A little bit of a breeze out there, just enough to give us a slight bit of a wind chill. Most areas don't have much of a wind right now, and with the clear skies, dry air, that's allowing the heaviest, coldest air to sink down to the surface, which is why we do have uh, temperatures, a little bit of a wind chill in places, but uh, temperatures are at or close enough to freeze.
freezing all the way from Balverde over in toward the hill country. Hondo close to it, Rio Medina. And the wind chill here in town, though, feels like 36 degrees. Sunny, very warm. Huge warm up again today, just like yesterday, where we went from mid 30s yesterday up into the mid upper 70s. We'll do the same thing today. Almost a 40 degree rise in temperatures and actually very close to the record high later on today. Then that front moves through late tonight. It is going to be sunny, colder and very, very windy. You'll, it's going to be windy overnight, uh, starting really about midnight or even late tonight in the hill country and windy all day long, 40 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts. We do have wind advisories in effect. I'm going to show you that in a moment. Then the winds subside. We'll get to freezing Sunday morning and make it up to the upper 50s. Close to freeze again Monday morning, then a warm up prior to the next front, which is going to be coming through late next week. Again, the wind advisory is, goes into effect tonight at midnight through 6 p.m. tomorrow for all of the area. And then this lighter shade in the southwestern half of our viewing area is a fire weather watch. Big question is, is there any rain anywhere in the forecast? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. What's going on, sir? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, we are seeing a bunch of stalls that are popping up this early in the morning, so not looking good for some of these drivers, but most of these shots at Transguide are showing that traffic is moving. You can see 1604 at Hosman. We are seeing traffic getting uh, going there, as well as 90 at Zazamoto, 1604 at Braun. We've only had about one crash to report this morning, so that's the good news. But as I mentioned, we are seeing those stalls that are now popping up. Let's go ahead and take you to the map. Uh, this one here off Loop 410 South and at Old Pearsall Road, not seeing issues when it comes to traffic delays, although we are seeing some sort of a light build up there on Pierce. Also watch out for that. And we are seeing the same situation still presenting itself off I-10 westbound at Frio Street, where a stall was detected there. Not the only ones. Let's go ahead and take a jump up over here to I-10 west eastbound at UTSA Boulevard. Another stall. So as you can see, that is a trend right now that we are seeing as the morning is getting going. But thankfully, these inbound times have been green across the board. If you're traveling through San Antonio in the next few minutes, you're not going to see any big delays just yet. So again, Again, that's the good news here, but those stalls, you got to watch out for those. Give those first responders plenty of room, and hopefully those drivers will receive some assistance and can be on their way. Guys? Thank you, Stephen. An abandoned restaurant seems to be the ongoing target of an arsonist. Someone set fire to the building near Loop 410 and Babcock Road overnight, and firefighters say it's not the first time. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Katrina, you mentioned earlier that this is the second time this has happened recently. Well, that's right. The second time within a few months, according to firefighters, they say this time the arsonist used a Molotov cocktail and threw it through the window. A San Antonio police officer happened to be passing by at the time around one o'clock this morning, noticed the smoke and called it in. Firefighters then arrived and found fire inside, but they say the sprinkler system had activated and put out most of the flames. This building on Loop 410 used to be Joe's Crab Shack. It was closed and boarded up some time ago, so there was no one working here at the time of the fire. Now, through the propped open doors on the side, we were able to see that there are several inches of water inside from the sprinkler system, but we cannot see any actual damage. And so far, it doesn't appear that any arrests have been made in connection with either fire. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Now to the north side where a man uh, is fighting for his life this morning after he was stabbed several times. Happened around 10 last night at the Indian Hollow Apartments on West Avenue near Wurzbach. That's where police tell us the man in his 40s was stabbed several times in the stomach by a woman in her 30s. Police say an argument between the two led up to the stabbing. The man was rushed to the hospital where he's now in critical condition. A man is facing charges following a road rage shooting that was caught on camera in West Bear County. So this is a new mugshot of 25 year old Edwin Albino. A bystander actually caught the moment he pulled out a gun and fired several shots outside the window of his SUV. Now, this is the video from when it happened back in November near Highway 90 in Bear County. Deputies say a car was hit five times, but no one was hurt. Albino was identified and deputies went to his home to arrest him, but he had left the state. You U.S. Marshals Task Force found and arrested Albino in Louisiana. He is charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. The Supreme Court delivering a blow to the Biden administration's vaccine mandate. The rule would have forced employees at big companies to require workers to be fully vaccinated or get tested every week. The high court struck that down. At the same time, the court is allowing the administration to proceed with a vaccine mandate for most health care workers in the U.S. 
President Biden says he's disappointed in the ruling, but the White House still plans to encourage private businesses to voluntarily impose vaccine mandates. This morning, starting at 8 a.m., Bear County is opening a mass testing site at the Wonderland of the Americas. Now, you can go to the address on your screen and get a COVID test. You don't need to make an appointment. You should get results in about 24 to 48 hours. Happening today, CPS Energy will begin a plan to upgrade the utilities operations after the San Antonio City Council approved that rate hike. It'll be almost 4% increase. This means starting in March, many users will pay an extra $5 a month. Then in two to four years, we can expect another rate change. CPS Energy's interim president CEO promises transparency with the money. That we're going to be making, uh, we'll, we'll get a work plan together and uh, we'll, we'll provide updates on our website periodically on the amount of investment we're making in our power plants. CPS Energy Board of Trustees also expected to discuss investigations of the company's operations during its next board meeting. Many council members are asking for a third party audit of the utility itself. Now to the most serious charges so far in connection with last year's attack on the U.S. Capitol. The founder of a far-right militia now charged with seditious conspiracy. And as Stuart Rhodes prepares to go to court today, the Congressional Committee investigating the Capitol riots, now targeting social media, issuing subpoenas to some of the biggest and most powerful tech companies. ABC's Faith Abube has the details. This morning, federal authorities investigating the attack on the U.S. Capitol are handing down the most serious charges yet. The Justice Department charging 11 people with seditious conspiracy, a rare charge used against people who conspire to overthrow, put down, or destroy by force the government. All the defendants are members or associates of the Oath Keepers, a right-wing militia. Near Dallas yesterday, the FBI removing evidence from the home of the group's leader, Stuart Rhodes. According to the indictment, Rhodes sent these encrypted messages to his followers after the 2020 election. Quote, we aren't getting through this without a civil war. And quote, we must do now what the people of Serbia did when Milosevic stole their election, refused to accept it and march en masse on the nation's capital. Investigators say Rhodes spent $17,000 on weapons and tactical gear in the weeks before the attack. Then on January 6, several Oath Keepers were seen here marching up the steps of the Capitol. Investigators say other members were armed and stationed nearby, all in an effort to stop the certification of President Biden's election victory. I, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., do solemnly swear. But the alleged conspiracy did not end on January 6. Later that month, on Inauguration Day, an associate of Rhodes allegedly messaged the group saying, quote, after this, if nothing happens, it's war, civil war 2.0. Rhodes is due in court today. He has repeatedly denied any wrongdoing, claiming he never told his members to enter the Capitol. If convicted, he and other Oath Keepers could face 20 years in prison. And as for the House Select Committee investigating the attack, it's now focusing on social media companies sending subpoenas to Facebook, Google, Twitter, and Reddit. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Student loan collecting company Navient has agreed to cancel $1.7 billion in student debt, affecting more than 66,000 borrowers to settle allegations of abusive lending practices. It also has to pay over $140 million in other penalties. Another delay for Tesla's Cybertruck. According to a report from Reuters, the car maker is pushing back initial production of the all-electric truck till the first quarter of 2023. The pickup first introduced in 2019 has already seen several significant production delays. Take a look at this comic book, now the third most expensive of all time. The 1938 issue features the first appearance of Superman. Action Comics number one was auctioned off yesterday for $3.18 million. That's amazing. And it was a dime when it came out. <laughs> That's hard to believe. It is 640, about 40 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, our Sarah Costa will take us on a Bloom Sculpture Tour. We're going to be right back. 6.43 on your Friday morning. Welcome back to GMSA. San Antonio known for cultivating art into our public spaces. That's why you may see life-size flower sculptures like those around San Antonio at several parks and trailheads. They're really beautiful. And Sarah Costa shows us the Bloom series and spoke with the innovative creators behind them. 
If you've walked, ran, or ridden in some of the San Antonio parks or trailheads, you may have noticed these large, beautiful sculptures depicting South Texas native flowers. No, they didn't bloom overnight. The seeds to have them installed have been part of a five-year plan. San Antonio's Department of Arts and Culture, along with the city's Parks and Recreation Department, were looking for ways to enhance local parks and greenways with public art. The goal to increase neighborhood connectivity, create a visual identity for the linear creeks, and to place more art on greenway trails. It's how the Bloom Sculpture Series came to life, the first one being planted at Mud Creek and McAllister Park in 2019. With the help of input from residents about which indigenous flowers to create, San Antonio artist Leticia Huerta and Wonderlust Ironworks brought the radiant oversized metal flowers to life. We come out here and we do some brainstorming um, with raw materials and we figure out how, how far we can curve, say, a bowl or a dome shape and we figure out um, how to attach things discreetly where it's not just industrially welded and it, and it really creates the illusion of some sort of uh, hybrid mechanical flower. The flowers resemble larger than life bicycle parts. Two more installations will be complete by this summer at Salado Creek at Southside Lions Park and Leon Creek at Tezzle Road facility. You can see all these flower installations right now at Five City Parks or the latest ones at Farias Park or right here at Brazos Pocket Park. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Is certainly larger than life size. Yeah, they're yeah. beautiful. I can't wait to check it out. Uh, what I was checking out earlier <laughs> with trans guy cameras, beautiful shots out there, but uh, not too many problems, at least from this angle. Yeah, we're not spotting any of those blooming structures, although they are beautiful. Traffic's looking pretty terrific as well. Uh, right now, we're taking a look at I-10 UTSA Boulevard. Just a few stalls out there. You can see that guy right over there. We do have another vehicle out there of I-10 Frio. Right now, that is a trending issue. We've been seeing stalls throughout the morning. Thankfully, they don't appear that they're in impacting traffic just yet, but let's take a look at the map and see where we're spotting those. Seeing actually a build up here in those southbound lanes of 410 at Old Pearsall Road, which is a little surprising. Right now, only a stall detected out there. We're going to find out what's going on there, but we are starting to see a build up along 410. So again, something we're going to watch closely. Let's take a jump up over here because as I mentioned, those stalls continue. US 90 eastbound at Zazamora Street, and that continues a little bit further up off I-10 westbound at Frio Street, where we showed you that stall uh, earlier, about an hour or so ago. So that that's been there quite a while. Let's take a jump up over here to UTSA I-10 eastbound at UTSA Boulevard. That's where we had another stall detected. So that has been the problem throughout the morning. As you can see, nothing else really causing any big issues. But again, we're going to watch that build up on the 410 southbound lanes. Not sure what's going on there, but something we're going to continue to watch closely. Inbound time still in good shape. But again, right now traffic's getting moving. Just watch out for those stalls, guys. Yes, sir. Love this picture from one of our regulars, Yvonne. Okay. And to paraphrase right. Chief Brody from Jaws, going to need a bigger bird bath. <laughs> Two buzzards For sure. have set up shop in her backyard. Okay. Do you see the other one, or is it just the one featured I always in this picture? I just see the one right okay. there. Yeah. But All right. oh, Can you imagine looking out and seeing that in your backyard? Yeah, it's a little intimidating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And those things are big, and they don't, I mean, there was one in a in the street one time and I was pulling up to it, it didn't move. It was oh, like, wow. no, I'm not moving. I'm not getting out of your way. <laughs> it was like the size of a small child. So yes. anyway, beautiful, beautiful start this morning. Gorgeous sunrise. It is cold again. We are 39 degrees here in town, freezing Valverde all in toward the hill country. And there's a little bit of a wind chill in places, not much of a breeze, but and that's why temperatures are down to freezing because clear skies, as you can see, dry air, light wind. We are going to get up to 77 degrees later on today. The record here in town at the airport is is 79, so really, really close to it. And then that's all going to be changing overnight. So here's the uh wind and the humidity. The nice thing is the humidity has not been on the heels of temperatures, so we have dry air in place. It'll be a very comfortable 77 later on today, and then it's going to cool off kind of quickly tonight. Then as the front moves on through here, which is going to be just after midnight, wind is going to be picking up any any sort of humidity, especially down there along the Gulf Coast is going to get pushed on out of here. It's going to be very, very windy overnight and all the way through the day tomorrow. And finally, the wind is going to be settling down a little bit by later on tomorrow night, but also we're going to have bone dry air, even drier air coming on in here. So that's really going to enhance the the fire danger off to the west. Nothing is showing up in the satellite picture right now and up to the north of us. Here's this big flow coming in here out of Canada. And so that's what's pulling down the colder air. And yes, we will be eventually hitting freezing, but not until Sunday morning today.
anything but that. I mean, it's literally we're all over the place with all these uh, weather features for the next 48 to uh, about 60 hours or so. 70 today at noon, sunny skies close to a record later on today. Then the front comes through here. It's going to be very, very windy overnight. Wind advisory throughout the day tomorrow, actually starting midnight through six o'clock tomorrow. And that's for all of the area. This lighter shade of tan in our southwestern half of our area. That's a fire weather watch. It's in effect the same time, 40 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts throughout the day and actually the overnight hours and throughout the day tomorrow. Wind will ease up a little bit. Then we're going to get down to freezing by Sunday morning up to 59 degrees. We'll be close to freezing again Monday morning, warm up middle of the week, and then another pretty decent front's going to move through here the end of next week. So what's going on again in the forecast, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> now, the, the big story, seriously, the very, very high fire danger with the dry, dry conditions. We haven't had any rain, mm -hmm. plus even drier air, windy conditions tomorrow. Some of the strongest winds we've seen around here in a long time. So be on the lookout for that. Mm -hmm. And then just windy all day long. So anything that can move and get blown around, mm -hmm. tie it down or put it away. And now I was thinking I have to look at the backyard again to remember yeah. what I need to bring mm -hmm. in. At least we don't have the Christmas decorations out. Good point. Yeah. Time now at 650 and about 40 degrees for now. Can you really believe what is on food labels? Tomorrow on GMSA, we'll tell you what you need to know about misleading food labels. Spurs back in action tonight in their desperate need of a win. Uh, Silver and Black have lost four straight and currently sit 13th place in the Western Conference. They look back to get it back in the win column tonight. Here at home against the Cleveland Cavaliers, tip-off is at... 7.30. Good luck, guys. Yes, go Spurs, go. Taking a look outside with live cam. Beautiful shot out there. I'm loving that. We're at 40 degrees. Grab a jacket and dress in layers. It's, it's going to warm up, for today at least. We'll be right back. It was no accident. That is what firefighters say about a fire at this former restaurant. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. They say this looks like a case of arson. Now, there was a fire inside what used to be Joe's Crab Shack. Firefighters believe someone threw a Molotov cocktail inside the building here at Loop 410 and Babcock. A police officer who was passing by noticed the smoke around one o'clock this morning. Firefighters then showed up and found fire. They say the sprinkler system had knocked down most of the flames for them. Now there are some boards on the side of the window showing that this business has been closed for some time. So there was no one working here at the time of the fire. Inside we saw there are several inches of water from that sprinkler system activating, but we could not see any actual damage and so far no arrests have been made. Reporting from the Northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Just about five till. Let's go ahead and check your Friday morning traffic with Stephen Cavazos. Mark 70, thankfully no big issues to report just yet, but check out I-10 West at 1604. We do have some incidents that are involving stalled vehicles there. I-10 and Frio looking good though. Watch out because those stalls though are causing some issues in the southbound lanes of 410 at Old Pearsall. We are seeing a stall over here off US 90 eastbound at Zazamora and a third stall right over here off I-10 eastbound at Loop 1604, Mike. Take a moment, look at your screen. Look at this beautiful sunrise on tap. It is gorgeous out there. Grab a coat. It's pretty chilly freezing in the hill country. 40 here in town. Little bit uh, hint of a wind chill here and there. Huge warm up today near record high temperature of 77. Big front moves through overnight. We have wind advisories go into effect as well as fire weather watch at midnight till 6 p.m. tomorrow. Winds are going to be gusting 40 to 50 miles per hour and then 57 tomorrow. We go from near record warmth today to freezing Sunday morning, close to it Monday morning, highs in the 50s tomorrow as well as on Sunday. Um, very, very high fire danger tomorrow with the dry air in place. Really, really watch it and just put everything away or tie it down that yeah. can blow away in your backyard. Good advice. Yep. Big changes this weekend. Mm -hmm. Long weekend for a lot of folks. Yeah, that's true. Thank you so much for joining us. And again, happy birthday to our Greg Simmons, who's probably asleep right now. <laughs> probably <laughs> is, but we'll let him know later. Yeah, Be we will. safe out there. Good morning, America's Next. And GMSA at 9. We'll see you there later on this morning.